is part three of how to draw the mountains in the mist. Uh, this video I'm going to be covering pretty much how to draw in the mountains. And I have the camera really zoomed in and centered here just so that you can really get an idea of the detail I'm going to be adding in. Let me move this really quick. I have my original drawing here so that way I can prop it up and use it as a reference for myself. That way I can kind of see what I'm trying to draw here. <laughs> I'm using my uh, own drawing as a reference just so that you know, the end result of this one will be very similar. Alright, so let's get to it. Um, having a range of pencils for the mountains will make it a lot easier to draw them. That is for certain. Uh, definitely is. But um, don't get me wrong, you can certainly get away with just using like a regular uh, number two pencil, you know, like one of those school pencils, you know, no problems. Um, it's just, it might present challenges here and there. So I just want to let you all know. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is lighten up this line that I had for the mountains, just because I'm going to probably end up finding it distracting uh, as I draw. So I'm just going to lighten this line up. I'm just using my eraser stick here, just kind of going along that line. You can do this if you like, you don't have to. I'm just doing it just so that I can kind of uh, regain where my mountains were after shading in the clouds here. That way I can tell where where the mountains are in this. So I just want to erase, especially like this line here. Although I probably will go back over it again so it's not going to be a huge deal but just want to clean things up a little bit before I get started here so that's what I'm doing with the eraser okay that should be just fine if what I need to do that's fine I don't need to work on this area just now I just need to focus on the big mountain first alright so I'm going to start off with uh, a lot of the shadows most likely. I usually start my shading relatively light. Uh, so uh, in the first video with the sketch, I made these lines that kind of cut through the mountains. Those lines are purely just so that I can tell where the light and shadow uh, sides of the mountain kind of differentiate between one another. So this side of the mountain is going to be all heavily in shadow here. So I'm just going to use a light coat uh, or, or light shading um, just to kind of get myself started here. I'm using a um, what I call a slip sheet and I'm noticing that the autofocus is kind of going crazy but I think it's okay. I'll have to try not to move my hand so much that the autofocus doesn't go crazy. I could turn it off but then the chances of it not being fully in focus is uh, likely. Alright, so I'm going to darken up this line a bit. Uh, keep in mind, when shading in objects, I find that shading in the direction or flow of the object really helps to tell or decipher you know, which uh, direction or plane uh, that object is going. I know that may not make too much sense, but the mountain that I'm drawing, all the detail and texture flows down. So that's the way I'm shading. If I were to start shading, you know, this way, going up like this, it would start to look a little funny. So just keep that in mind. You know, of course, I'm going to be doing so much texture that I won't even see what I just did there. But, you know. It's the same thing with like if you're trying to shade in a sphere, uh, you want to shade in a circular type motion around it or you know inside it, trying to create that sphere-like shape, and it really helps to tell, um, you know, that it's round and spherical. It's the same thing with anything else. It's just one of those little tricks that um, I picked up over the years, and that's the th you know one of the things. That the more you draw, the more little tips you kind of figure out on your own. You know, that you can use to incorporate in, in later drawings. So again I'm using a, a 2B pencil and I'm just uh, I, I said I was lightly shading but I'm, I'm already gone and pretty dark here but that's alright. 
Uh, I'm just adding in quite a bit of uh, loose shading here. I'm going to go in and quickly shade in the rest of this while I'm here. I'm going to erase out this line. I moved where this is going to be. Okay. Clean up the excess there. All right, so this side of the mountain is going to be the highlighted side. So you still want to add in some shading, but you know, nowhere near as much. You also want to make sure that the pressure that you're adding is significantly less than you would on the other side. But just keep in mind, if this side ends up being shaded in a little bit dark, it's not a huge deal because you can always uh, darken the other side of the mountain a little bit more just to kind of counteract it. It's all a big balancing uh, thing in the end, so. I'm just trying to let these shade get the values in that I want. actually been a little while since I've drawn a mountain surprisingly it's usually like my main subject that I draw in whenever I don't know what to draw it's usually mountains because I remember when I first did this drawing all I wanted to do was draw in a, you know a scene with mountains and have a river flowing through it and I didn't know what to put in between the the river and the mountains so I put in the tree line and a, a layer of mist and and then it became the mountains in the mist which is still one of my more popular drawings I've done this year which I you know out of all the drawings that uh, I put out it's just kind of surprising but yeah I'm still really pleased with how that turned out but like I said it's always a surprise with how things turn out so this one kind of comes down I'm drawing the the shadow here the, the line for it these mountains are very, very steep and cliffy. <laughs> it's a lot of rigid uh, angles to them and such. And this one gets really dark. I'm going to end up switching to uh, a harder pencil here really quickly. Just because this one isn't adding in the details that I want. But then again, I'm still just adding in the, the values that I want to see. And then this side, it's the lighter side. So I'm shading relatively lightly on this side. And then this line cuts over and meets. There's another steep edge or cutoff right here comes all the way up something like that and then this is the last part of this mountain here Just want to keep this relatively light and bring it all the way down. Alright, now that I have this first mountain you know, relatively shaded in, I'm just going to go back over it and darken up some of these areas because this mountain really gets very dark. So I'm going to darken this area up. There's a bit of texture and shadow around in here. Same with this area. Just want to really darken this area up. There's a quite a large shadow that comes off of this as a result of the uh, the lighting, and this gets a little bit more shadow or texture rather. All right, so. 
Now I'm going to use the blending stump. Now that I have all the values in place, I'm just going to blend out what I have. So basically what I'm doing right now, besides from blending everything out, in the end, I'll have um, a nice clean, uh, you know, darkened area to work with for my texture. So it'll make it a lot easier. And then I'll go back in with the eraser, you know, bring in some highlights. And then, you know, go back in with different pencils, add some shadows in again. So it, it's a pretty big process. Um, as a lot of you probably know, I really like adding in texture to my drawings. Uh, that's kind of, you know, one of my signature things that I really like to do. So I really like to go back and forth with different pencils, erase, and go back in again. And I I'll, I'll literally spend hours just adding in texture. It's just one of my, you know, my favorite thing to do, really. Just want to blend out a little bit more. Now this process, you don't really have to be too cautious of what you're doing. You're just blending out the area. You still want to blend in the direction of the mountain. And I'm, I'm not blending too hard, just kind of letting the blending stump do its own thing here. Alright, so that's relatively where I want to be at this stage. something like this okay so from here I'm gonna grab uh, a 2h pencil and this is the pencil I'm gonna be using to add in the majority of my textures here so with this one I use the hard edge of it actually I'm gonna probably even need some a little darker than this let me see if I have a B pencil somewhere here we go grab a B pencil and see what this one does. There we go. That's a lot better. Now with these, you're going to have to press relatively hard. And the reason why I'm using a lighter pencil than the 2B is because it's it's a harder lead, which makes a, a, the line quality is much thinner. And you can really get that detail working in. So think of it this way. The, the higher the H number, the more uh, detail you can add in because the pencil will keep the hard edge to it much longer so you can really keep adding in that detail for a very long time and the the higher the B number it's more of a shading pencil it really loses its edge very quickly so you just want to keep that in mind now having that range of pencils like I said it's not absolutely essential but it really does help it really does you can really experiment like what different pencils do they all act a little bit differently. I mean, you don't need, you know, 9H through 9B. That's how the pencils range. The higher the H number, the harder the lead is. So the lighter the um, the gradient. And uh, the higher the B number, the darker it is. But you don't need, like, every one. The pencils that I use the most are 4H, 2H, uh, B, 2B, and 4B. I don't usually go much higher than a 4B because it tends to leave a large amount of shine on the image and that's not something that I really like so <clears throat> alright so I got quite a bit of texture in here it's looking very flat at the moment which I'm not surprised uh, I have to start adding in the highlights on this to, to really make it show up. So this is where having the uh, one of these erasers really, really comes in handy. And all you have to do is just really, you know, n not even use that much pressure on it and just kind of lightly work it in. It'll kind of pick up as it goes but you really don't need to put that much pressure on it. I'm going to try and pick up quite a bit down in here.
So this is just to add in a bit of variance and texture, just to give everything a bit more of a, you know, that visual interest. All right, so erase that out or move that away a little bit. I'm gonna grab the 2H pencil. And with this one, I'm gonna use it on the side and just kind of shade in a little bit here, kind of darken in those highlights. Just a tad. Add in a bit more texture. And here's where I'm gonna go in with, I have to sharpen this pencil. We're going with the 4B and really darken in that one ridge. This is also where I'm gonna add in quite a bit of detail and texture to it. So this is where I'm gonna really start to shape this ridge here. Because right now it's this line is way too smooth. I gotta sort of like wiggle it around a bit just to add some variance to it. So around in here, gonna come out a bit more. And then I really want to darken up this ridge right here. Just something like that. And down here, kind of bring this to a point and come back. The only problem with you know with this 4B pencil, like I said, is it loses its point really quick, but just rotating the pencil around helps to bring back that point, and then you can you know keep using it, but eventually you have to resharpen it again which <laughs> happens to be quite often. All right, so before I get started on this side, I'm gonna erase out some of this uh, shading that we did just to add in some texture really quickly here. Gosh, this is gonna be a long video, isn't it? That's all right. It's a real-time mountain tutorial. That's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a long video. All right, just wipe away. All that excess uh, eraser shavings there, and let's see. Let's grab a let's grab a B pencil. I know it might seem like, well, what what pencil are you gonna grab now? What, why are you using this one? Why are you using that one? Uh, it it all has to do with uh, just how dark I want something to be. And once you start using like a full range of pencils, you'll kind of get the hang of how dark one is compared to the other. And I want to have this area somewhat dark. I want it to kind of contrast against the sky. So this area is going to come down. Actually, this ridge should be up here. So that's an easy fix. I'm going to draw it up here. Let me just erase this out so that I can see that. And this whole thing should be up about that high. It's just a minor fix. You can fix things as you go. It's not a big deal. Shade in this area really quick. All right, let's get back over here. Now this area, or this side of the mountain is the highlighted side. So you still want to add in the texture, but you don't want it to come in anywhere near as dark as this side of the mountain. You want to be able to tell that there's a difference between the light and shadow here. That, that is very important to be able to tell that. So there's going to be uh, quite a bit of shadow coming off of this area down here. I'm going to grab a 2H pencil for further down. This is going to add in a bit more uh, detail that I'm looking for down here. I'm 
I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the reason why I'm using this sheet of paper is so that I don't uh, smear what I've done with the, the, the clouds. So even though I'm covering up you know, part of the drawing, it's just helping to protect it. But a lot of this is just uh, shading uh, and then erasing, shading and erasing. I know it can kind of seem like a, a mundane, boring process, but um, I, I find it to be pretty essential to creating texture. It's just a lot of editing and going back in and doing a bit more. So uh, I'm going to work on a bit more of these shadowed areas a bit before I go back into the highlights again. Something a bit darker here. I'll grab a 4B for this area. I'm going to really uh, angle out this line here. This line, it really gets wiggly down in here and it's a real steep uh, cut off here something like this switch pencils to the B pencil add in a bit more detail just gonna erase a little bit So I'm just trying to really make this area really like rigid looking. And it sometimes takes a little while to get the effect going. But hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm pretty close in with the camera. So hopefully you can really get uh, an idea of what's going on with it. The detail that I just added in was a little bit too steep, so I'm going to just go back in with the eraser just a little bit here. Just something like that. Alright, so I'm going to leave that alone for the time being. Uh, I got a little bit of detail to add in right about here. I think in, in real time, or not, this is real time, but uh, when I was actually drawing this for the first time, I remember spending a lot of time on the mountains. I think I, I spent the majority of time doing them. So I really wanted to see how much detail and texture I can add into them. And I think that's one of the reasons why this video did so well. Um, a, lot, every, a lot of the comments were you know, asking how, how I was able to put so much detail into them. And I wish I could remember. Uh, it's just, you know, it just takes the time. Just got to take the time to do it. And it's pretty much the answer I have for everything, you know. Like, how long does it take you to, um, you know, for one to learn you know, as much as, as you know. Uh, it, just, it just takes time. That's really all it is. You know, because I've been, I've been doing this uh, little drawing for... Oh, I've been doing it for as long as I can remember, but I really started to take it seriously when I started the, the YouTube account uh, a long time ago now. So I think it's a good thing. You know, one of those, I, you know, I, I'm really glad that I made the YouTube account because it really gave me a reason to keep up with my artwork. Uh, I hate to say it, but I think if I didn't make a YouTube account, I don't think I'd be drawing anywhere near as much as I am now. So, if you give yourself a reason to draw, you know, almost forcing yourself to draw, uh, almost on a regular basis, uh, it's a good thing.
and as you you know it, otherwise you may not have the the motive or just you know any reason to to do it so i'm really glad that i have you know have a really good reason to keep it up so just keep that in mind this mountain i like i like this part cuz it's uh has a curve to it with all the detail and texture. Let me go back in with the eraser a little bit here. Did I mention how much I love this eraser? <laughs> I, 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 I hope Papermate um, one day sees how much I promote this eraser because I swear it's one of the best erasers I've ever gotten. It's so nice. I have a couple of these, you know, just in case that one goes, and I have a lot of spare erasers for it. I go through them pretty quickly. Looking for a pencil. Here we go. Just want to add in a bit of texture. This is a 2H pencil, just to add a bit of this hard texture here. Which isn't really showing up, but that's alright. Just want to add a little bit. And grab the 4B. And if there's one thing that I go through really quickly, it's pencils. I have um, a stockpile of uh, these, the Faber Castell pencils. I have a stockpile, I have probably about 50 of them. Just because how quickly I'll go through them. I have about 8 to 10 of each shade or a gradient and uh, <laughs> that was that was a good purchase it really was alright so there's a shadow that comes through right here oh and uh, I guess I should mention this but in every one of these videos I have um, the link to the, the original drawing so that if you wanna look at the reference as you're looking at this video you know feel free because that's exactly what I'm doing I'm looking at my own drawing to draw this one and it's helping out quite a bit because I added in a lot of texture in this you know at some points this I'm wondering what did I get myself into here but it's all good um, this was heavily requested so I'm, I'm glad to do it I have no issues whatsoever uh, this video is already up to 30 minutes and it's gonna go on quite a bit longer so I hope you all don't mind sitting and uh, watching through me drawing some mountains here, but I know a lot of you probably will. Let's try to clean off the eraser here. It's got too much graphite on it. All right. But uh, I had uh, one person on my Facebook page uh, message me and say, you know, when you're doing this, uh, show how to use the the blending stump on the mountains and I want to bring that up during this video and mention that uh, the only uh, pl real place I used the blending stump was in that first process mainly because uh, the mountains I'm doing are very very detailed and textured and using the blending stump on it would take away a lot of that detail and texture that I worked so hard on which wouldn't be good so just keep that in mind that a blending stump will really take away that texture that you added in to the drawing. So it, it's really good for, you know, blending. See, I'll use the blending stump on the bottom of these mountains, blending it into the mist. I'll use it there. That's that's a given. But anywhere else, not really. I'm having a bit of an issue rendering out this one area here, and I'm not sure why. up this area a little bit using a, a B pencil and see how this one will do every you know every once in a while it's just finding the right pencil to do the area with or I could just being too critical about it and, <laughs> and uh, I really should just move on to the other part which oh, I think that was it right there that looks good it looks good very good all right 
before I start going crazy, yeah, let's move on a little bit here. All right, so there's a pretty heavy shadow right here, which I probably shouldn't be using a 4B for. Let's switch to a B, a B pencil. All right, and this moves up pretty far. Just something like this. We keep it simple for now. All right, so over here is the last part of this mountain. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> I'm going to change the shape of it a little bit here, kind of give it a, a little bit more uh, detail and character to it. That way it's not just a smooth line, you know, just care carelessly um, moving down the page here. I want to make sure that, that line is really characteristic, has a lot of character to it. All right, I'm just adding in a bit of uh, texture onto this one here uh, before I go into with the eraser and start erasing out again. I really want to, the important thing is where these two mountains meet, you want to carry off quite a bit of de uh, a texture and detail off of that. It really helps to unify them and make them feel like they're you know, part of the same mountain. Because with that stark contrast between this side and that side, it can almost feel like they, you know, they don't even belong. So you kind of have to add in a bit of uh, dark detail and texture to really unify them together. Alright, I'm going to go with the... Actually, I'm going to erase a little bit more here. I'm going to erase quite a bit of this up. I'm going to go back over with the 2H pencil and add a lot of texture in that way. That way I can really shade it in, add the detail and texture, but not really darken it up too much here. Again, you want to make sure that that pencil line flows in the same direction as the mountain. Something like that. All right, I'll quickly work on this section as well. Just erase out some of that shadow. And work on the mountains a bit. Let me get in there with the B pencil really quick. There's a lot of detail coming off of this right here. So I find that when adding in the details, like adding in a cluster of dark lines really helps to add to it as well. I'm going to grab the 2H pencil and darken things up a little bit. This is really starting to shape up well. I'm, I'm pleased with how this is looking so far. I was getting a little worried there in the beginning of this. I was like, oh great, this is just not going to work. But I'm glad it's working out quite well. I'm really pleased with how this is looking so far. But one thing that I'm noticing is I really got to work on this area over here. Uh, this section here. I have a whole ridge section coming off of this here. Bring the scrap of paper in over here. Uh, don't worry, the other two mountains don't really take too long to do. This is the most time consuming one to draw. Even for me, it, it takes me a while to draw this one. You know, just because you got to go back and forth, back and forth between uh, details and textures. But over here, I'm just going to quickly shade in. And what's going on with that? And I'm going to add in a couple dark areas of texture on this side here just to add a bit of uh, interest. There's a bit of a 
like a ridge over here. And then with this, I can add in a highlight. Just to add in a bit of uh, detail there. So I'm switching back between pencils pretty quickly here. Here's the uh, the 2H pencil. Actually, I'm going to go back to the B, sorry. Uh, I switch pencils really quickly while drawing. I just want to add in a lot of detail here. And I also really got to darken in the shadow as well. So I'm doing all this with the B pencil at the moment. And just add in a bit more detail over there and uh, I think this mountain is looking pretty good I'm quite pleased with how this one came out it's pretty close to how the original looks I'm happy with that all right so I gotta sharpen the pencils now 36 minutes into it almost 37 minutes cowabunga all right so this mountain has you know nowhere near as much detail uh actually it'll probably take another 20 minutes to do this one watch it will but that's okay it'll be just fine all righty so this one is interesting I, I did this one very differently so there's a line so i'm, I'm just going to quickly draw in these lines for the highlights on here and this comes down more this one's interesting. Yeah, this one is nowhere near, you know, has doesn't have anywhere near as many ridges as the original one does, so. So this area here gets relatively dark. And I'm probably gonna end up doing this whole mountain in one pencil shade here. So I just erased out the line for this mountain here just so it wouldn't distract me as much because I know that would end up bothering me. Alright, so just adding in a bit more here. Actually, I'm going to use a different pencil for the highlights on this. That's a given. That's a certainty. Most definitely. Alright, so for the highlights, I'm just going to lightly add in. I'm probably going to having to darken in the shadows as well. There's not enough contrast here that I'm seeing. I'm using a 2H for these highlights on the top of the mountain here. Just to quickly add them in. And we got this whole area over here. Just going to add in a big area just like that. All right. And then there's another ridge that comes up with this. Something like that. And then it comes down. All right. I'm going to grab the 4B pencil, which <laughs> needs to be sharpened. Always needs to sharpen this one. Okay. There's a little bit of a point right there, but I, I don't want to really go crazy with this pencil. I just want to darken in these key areas and then I'm going to blend out the rest probably. Just something like this. I don't want to go too crazy with this one. All 
All right, so I'm gonna grab the blending stump and I'm gonna blend out the highlight a little bit just to kind of make it fit in here. Blend out some of this texture down here. I really wanna blend down this area too because all this area is gonna be missed. So this one's just gonna be something like that. Bring out some of those highlights. So this mountain was significantly easier than the other one. There's nowhere near as much uh, texture and detail in it. Uh, the main reason being is because this mountain is uh, significantly further away than the large one. So the detail and texture in it will be much less. Just because um, I touched base on this uh, in the original video just a little bit. It has to do with something that I call atmospheric perspective. I have a whole video on it. Basically the the water particles in the air uh, mix with uh, the light and with the, the light you know when you have water hitting light it really bends and spreads all the light you know all different directions so your ability to see details and texture really far away um, you know it really takes away from that so mountains that are really f you know very far away don't have anywhere near as much detail and texture that's why when you are, you know if you happen to live in an area where you can really see distant objects that's why a lot of things turn blue it's because the the sky mixes with the water vapor and turns everything blue <laughs> i think there's a whole wiki page on you know the, how everything with um, that works i think they call it aerial perspective i don't know why i call it atmospheric perspective it's just what i've always called it all right so i'm going to call it on this mountain here and then this last mountain this is the easiest one I'm gonna use a B pencil actually this has got to be really light I'm gonna use a 2h pencil and erase what I did because it's got to be light very light much lighter than what I have there we go that's what I need so this area I'm gonna Keep it like that. Also, I want to keep this area really light because of the trees that I'm going to be adding in. Remember what I said in the first video? You don't want to add too much detail behind those trees because you actually physically scratch the paper. And then when you do the trees, you'll see those scratch marks through it. And believe me, it makes for some pretty horrible looking trees. I've learned that one the hard way numerous amounts of times. So that's why the, the sketch video, the first video that I did of this series is very important. Just so that you don't do that. Alright, so that this mountain I'm just gonna leave like this, just you know, very, very light in the distance. I'm actually going to erase down a little bit here just to kind of make it a bit smaller. Something like that. All good and well. Alright, so the last thing uh, in this video that I'm going to cover is just blending out the bottoms of these mountains all the way down to the um, the line where we have for the trees. So this line that we still have left, that's the mist layer, and then this line is the tree line here. I'm gonna blend what I have left all the way down to that line. Now I'm just gonna blend out the bottom of these mountains here. And blend in a circular motion. Just carry that down. We'll do the same thing all up in here. Just like that. And in the next video, I believe we'll be covering how to draw the mist, which is very similar to how to do the clouds. So it's gonna be uh, slightly repetitive, but I think you'll enjoy that one.
All right, so I'm gonna leave this one off just like that. Um, I gotta say, I'm pretty pleased with how the mountains are turning out so far. So I hope you're all enjoying this one. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, it really helps out. And please subscribe so that way you can see when the next videos come out, If uh, hopefully if you're enjoying this one. All right, everyone, I will see you all later. Take care.